This video will help you familiarize yourself with the Webasto Thermal Test software. We will be concentrating on version 2.16 in this video, but look for the accompanying video covering version 3.8 as well. This video is not an exhaustive feature by feature guide, but is meant to be used in conjunction with the published operating instructions found on our technical website, www.techwabasto.com. After discussing how to connect the Webasto Thermal Test software and hardware, We'll cover the different items available in each menu selection, the various views available, and some of the more advanced functions. In order to connect to a Wabasto heater, you'll first need to download and install the PC diagnostic software from techwabasto.com. After downloading the software, the zip file must be extracted or unzipped to your hard drive before installing the program. You'll also need to have a port converter to allow your PC to talk to the WBUS network in the heater. We'll call this port converter the diagnostic interface in this video. This can be ordered through any authorized Wabasto dealer. And finally, you'll need an adapter to interface with the heater you're working on. You can find this part number in the service parts list for each heater model. You'll also find a multi-adapter that allows you to connect to any PC diagnostics capable heater with just one part number. If you have a heater equipped with the SmartTemp 3.0 timer, you will need to unplug the SmartTemp in order to clear the communication bus for the Wabasto Thermal Test program. Connect the PC diagnostic interface to the heater, the computer, and the vehicle's battery. When you connect the diagnostic interface to battery power, you will see the UBAT light illuminate. The power for the PC diagnostics must be taken from the same power supply that the heater is using. After the diagnostic interface is connected, it's time to open the software. One note on the connection before we begin. After opening the Wabasto Thermotest software, you will select the heater model you're working on. WBUS 4.0 and newer versions on the right, versions 3.5 and older on the left. Newer versions will open Wabasto Thermotest version 3.8 or newer. Older WBUS versions will open Wabasto Thermotest version 2.16. If you have connection issues between the Wabasto Thermal Test software and your PC, we do have a manual driver download available. All virus scan software must be disabled and you will need admin access to your PC to install the driver. Now that Wabasto Thermal Test is open, you're ready to go. Click on the Start Diagnosis shortcut or use the Diagnosis menu to begin communicating with the heater. When communication starts, you'll see a progress bar on the screen and you'll also notice that the TX and RX lights on the diagnostic interface flash slowly at first while communication is being attempted, then very rapidly when communication is established. When communication is established fully, the program will be ready to use. Let's go look at the functionality now. Now that version 2.16 of Wabasto Thermotest is open, We'll look at the different tabs and options we have for diagnosing the heater. For the purposes of this video, the first thing we'll do is start diagnosis so more options will be visible to us. We'll start with the tabs and shortcuts along the top. The diagnosis tab allows us to select the device we're working on, the heater model. It allows us to start and stop diagnosis. We can choose component test and this, this depends on the heater model you're working on, which components are available to you fuel prime and fuel pump test. You can view a summary of the heater you're working on now, and we're gonna get into summaries a little bit later. You can save a current summary, or you can open a previously saved summary, and of course you can print that as well. The diagnosis menu is also where you would start and stop your measurement protocol, which we'll get into again shortly. The view tab allows us to see the heater overview, the operating data, which is going to show us things like burning duration, runtime. Device info will show us information about the heater itself, specifically the control unit. The actual values graph, we'll get into that in a little bit more detail shortly, but the actual values graph shows us a graphical view of all the sensors and actuators inside of the heater so we can see what's going on in real time. Protocol. I think uh, data acquisition protocol is taking snapshots of what's going on in the heater as it's running. And this we'll also get into in more detail. And finally, 
the view tab allows us to view the faults that are stored in the heater. The faults tab is where you would go to clear faults or clear a heater interlock. The control tab is where you can turn the heater on and off or switch the ventilation mode. Again, many of the options in the control tab are going to vary depending on what model heater you're working on. So definitely consult the Wabasto Thermotest Operations Manual. The calibration menu is where you would go to enter the CO2 adjustment mode. If you're having a problem with your computer connecting to the Wabasto Thermotest interface, the diagnostic interface, you would use the extras menu to select the appropriate COM port. The protocol menu is where you'll find the various controls for storing and creating protocol files. And the window menu is what allows you to arrange the different windows that you've opened, the different views you've opened for the heater. And the language tab allows you to choose the language that's displayed in the Wobasto Thermotest software. And the help menu allows you to search for help. You'll find that many of the most commonly used features found in these different menus are offered as icons right under the menu bar for quick access. Now let's look at the most commonly used view for seeing what's happening inside of the heater that can help us with the diagnosis. The overview window shows all the major operating parameters in one screen. And let's go over these parameters now. Going from the top to the bottom, we can see the supply voltage that the heater is seeing, the cabin temperature sensor, the heating energy, so the output in watts, the combustion air fan speed, and in the case of the dual top heaters, the gradient sanitary water temperature. We can also see the glow plug, the percentage of load, the flame detector, and that's given to us in a resistance value, and then the actual operating mode as a percentage. Now below those bar graphs, you're going to see indicator lights. From left to right, combustion air fan, fuel pump, glow plug, LE1 and LE2, are for dual top only, and they're not offered in North America, so please ignore those. And the flame detector. Again, depending on the model heater you're working on, this overview will be slightly different. It's important to note the top portion with the bar graphs, that's a real-time indication of a value, a given value, temperature, voltage, watts. The lights along the bottom are simply indicators. Something is on or off, something is active or inactive. Below that, you have your operating state and device state. And really it's most important to note that what you're looking for in operation state is controlled operation. That means the heater is up and running and it's attempting to reach the target temperature that's requested. The final four segments of this video will go over saving a summary report, the actual values graph, saving a protocol file, and CO2 adjustment. The summary is a snapshot of the heater's internal information at that point in time. It's highly recommended to save a report upon arrival before the heater is even switched on. To create a summary, the heater does not have to be switched on. It only needs to be connected to 12 volts and to the diagnostic interface. The diagnosis menu is where you'll go to save a summary without viewing it, to open a summary previously saved, or to view a summary, which can then be saved. Let's see what information is contained in this report. The top portion is the device information, things like the serial number. The middle portion is a breakdown of the working and operating hours found in the operating data section. In this case, the heater has spent about three quarters of its time running on low load. Below the operating data, you'll find up to five fault codes that are stored with the description of each code and the pertinent data that was occurring at the time that fault was set. The output file of the save summary function is a .txt file or a text file. This can then be saved on your hard drive. If your heater is equipped with the optional SmartTemp 3.0 digital timer with Bluetooth functionality, you can view and even export a customer report right from the accompanying SmartTemp 3.0 mobile app. From the home screen, tap on the diagnostic icon from the diagnostic screen, tap on Start Diagnosis to start reading the diagnostic information available for that model heater. At this point, tap the Customer Report icon to view the diagnostic report. The customer report is ready to view, but you'll notice the green progress bar and the message at the bottom of the screen indicates that the report is not yet ready for export. 
This is the same diagnostic report available through the Thermotest software. Tapping this icon allows you to export the custom report via the various methods available to your mobile device. The actual values graph is a customizable, real-time representation of what the heater is doing. In this case, the heater is already in an on state when the graph was started, but that does not have to be the case. Right-clicking anywhere on the graph allows you to select or deselect different parameters to monitor. This can really help make this graph easier to read, and it can be used to show you only the information that you want to see. If you hover your cursor over any point in the graph, you'll see the value that's represented where the crosshairs are located. This allows you to see precisely the value at any point on any of the lines. As time passes, the color-coded line graphs for each function moves left to right to represent time and up or down to represent the value for that specific component, for example, RPM, resistance, frequency, etc. The column at the right shows the range of the value that's being measured for that particular component or that particular colored line. This is a very useful tool for seeing what's happening while the heater's running and to catch potential small interruptions in operation. The protocol feature is particularly useful for intermittent issues or if something really only happens now and then and you simply can't babysit the heater for long periods of time waiting for that something to happen. A protocol is a data logging type operation. As you can see here, when you start a protocol, after assigning a file name and deciding where you want to save the file, you can then select how often you want a snapshot to be taken. And this snapshot includes all of the sensors, all the actuators, everything that's going on inside of that heater. Simply start the protocol and leave the heater running. When you want to stop the protocol, simply go to the Diagnosis menu and select Stop Protocol. The file output will be a rather large .txt file or a text file, but this can be copied and pasted into an Excel spreadsheet, which makes it much easier to view. Once in Excel, the columns can be manipulated, hidden, or deleted as needed. Now you can simply look through the data collected and look for the issue. Maybe there is an intermittent open that shuts the heater off or a sensor that isn't quite acting right. The protocol allows you to capture all this information and lay it out for you to examine. As you can see, this can be a very useful tool for diagnosing those tough issues. Before we get into how to adjust the heater's CO2 output, it's a good idea to cover a few basics before we get started. First, in order to adjust the CO2 output of a heater, you must use an exhaust gas analyzer. And second, the CO2 has been set at the factory to work within the specifications outlined in our literature. The CO2 needs to be checked and possibly adjusted after any components have been replaced during service. As an example, the combustion air fan or the control module. Now let's get to it. This procedure covers the air top line of heaters and is offered as an example. Please consult the service manual for the model of heater you're working on for the specifics, as well as the target CO2 specification. The rheostat control dial can be used in conjunction with a calibrated exhaust gas analyzer to adjust the CO2 output. With the control dial in the off position, ground the brown wire on the X15 connector. Turn the heater on to the 12 o'clock position. A flashing indicator light lets you know that the heater is ready for adjustment. Turn the knob in small increments, waiting a few minutes between adjustments. Observe the CO2 reading. Make more small adjustments as needed. Make sure you allow for a few moments for the heater to stabilize before making more adjustments. When the CO2 is in the desired range, simply disconnect the brown wire from ground. This saves the setting. If you don't have the rheostat dial, you can adjust the CO2 using Wabasto thermal test software. Here's how. Before we begin, a note about the SmartTemp 3.0 and 3.0 Bluetooth timers. 
If you have a heater equipped with one of these timers, you will have to disconnect the timer to allow the Wabasso Thermotest software to communicate with the heater. The graphics you're seeing on the screen are from a dual-top EVO 6 model heater. While the procedure and the graphics are very similar, please consult the service manual for the model heater that you are working on. After connecting the diagnostic adapter and the heater to the Wabasto Thermotest software, start the calibration process using the Calibration tab or the shortcut icon. The heater will start and you will be instructed to wait for the heater to come up to temperature. When the heater has reached controlled operation, the adjustment window will be shown. Take note of the current CO2 adjustment value as well as the reading on your CO2 meter. If you need to get the heater back to this baseline, simply enter that value in the box. In this case, 81, and hit OK. Click the left or right arrows to adjust the CO2. Again, make small adjustments to allow the heater to stabilize for a few minutes before making another adjustment. When adjusting with the Thermotest software, the heater is running at full load. You will use the specification printed in the service manual. When the CO2 adjustment is complete, simply hit OK. We hope you found this video to be helpful, and we encourage you to watch it again and refer to the appropriate service manual as needed. If you ever need help or support with Wabasto products, remember there are three ways to get help. You can go to our technical support website, www.techwabasto.com. You can email us by using the Contact Us feature on the website, or you can call our technical support folks at 1-800-860-7866 and follow the prompts to reach the team.